pretty, pretty tough the race. Oh. <laughs> a little bit bumpy, guys. You reckon we're going to get any further than this? <laughs> guys, 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 I hate to tell you this, but if this gets much worse, we ain't getting any further because even this Jeep is struggling. At some point, I reckon we're going to have to go by foot, boys. I don't think I'm going to have to. Hey, stop, stop, uh, stop, I'm going to have to drop stop, into low stop. range, guys. I can't get any further stop, than that. Stop, this. wait, stop. There's water up here. Get out, guys. Let's get out. As you can see, guys, I'm really sorry, but this track's just just getting it's, too treacherous. Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh, even for this uh -oh, Jeep. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Yeah. yeah, we overheated him. I mean, what are we going to do? Well, I'll tell you what. There's a problem because we've still got a long way to go. The lost bunker was said to be buried close to another bunker that had been opened and emptied long ago. If they can find that, it might lead them to their goal. Got out, I had no GPS signal, we, middle of nowhere, and we were well and truly stuck. Luckily, Chris, the gadget man, might have yeah, something right. that can help. Ow. Right, let's go get the helicopter, mate. Yeah. Oh, we killed our Jeep. Tree. Okay, I wanted to take it up. I want to see what's between us okay, and that tree okay, line over there. Hard to go, hard to go. Yeah. The overgrowth is too thick to see the open bunker from the sky. But what Craig can see is a big problem ahead. Between us and that hill over there, which is where we have to go, what do you see? A swamp. It's a lot of water. A big swamp. Okay, bring it back. We've seen what we've seen. So are you telling me we have to actually cross the swamp? Yes, I'm telling you that. Perfect landing. The trench line lies two kilometers away in the forested hills beyond the swamp. It will be a long one. OK, Adrian, yours mine. The diggers have no choice but to continue on foot. This is yeah. a proper adventure, boys. Oh, yeah. Bloody hell! It's a proper bloody swap. <laughs> really is. I'm going to get a tick. So one thing I don't want is a tick. It's only a matter of no, time I just don't want. No, I just don't want a tick. <laughs> if you think crossing that swamp was bad for us, imagine what it would have been like to be a German in 1945. You're weighed down with gear, you're fighting for your life, and people are shooting at you. Not a friendly place to be. What's yeah. really important is be careful where you step in. Thanks for that advice, Adrian. The trench line the diggers are looking for was one of the very last in Latvia to surrender to the Red Army. It's so well hidden under 70 years of undergrowth, they need to scan the forest floor for clues. Oh, Guess what got? that is? That's a helmet. That's a German M42, remains of a German M42 helmet. That's probably been on the surface since the war ended. Brilliant. It's cool. <laughs> nice find. Well if you have helmets which were pretty much laying on the top since the war, it must have been full of Germans holding these positions. I don't know whether they were fighting or not, but then after they capitulated, the stuff must have been laying everywhere. You know yeah. what we should do? Set the machines on and start detecting. But they hardly need them. I'm walking along, and there, underneath the bush, everybody else has walked past it. There's a helmet, a German helmet, sat under the bush. This is fantastic. It's been there 70 years. Everybody else has gone past it. Found it. Brilliant. Yeah, but... And it isn't just a great find. It's also a fascinating clue. So this was inaugurated, if you will, in 1942. And what they did was they simplified the stamping. The one before that, the M40, had got a rolled edge, so they used to have to machine it and roll the edge under. Yeah. And this is an M42, and you can see that the edge isn't rolled. It's just straight flat. Cool. Who would have worn that then? Why did he lob it? Well, I don't know whether or not he lobbed it. This, this has probably just got left behind when they, uh, when they surrendered. Oh, right, eventually okay. had to capitulate. But this is a standard German, German issue soldier's helmet. I was blown away. These weren't just any helmets. These were the helmets that were used at the end of the war. Everyone had one? Yeah, everyone had one. Reports said this place was taken by the Red Army in May 1945. Hitler had committed suicide just days earlier on April the 30th, and even 70 years later, the team can still feel the sense of German despair. The atmosphere in this place was really strange. It was so quiet. There was, there was 
something in the air in this whole place that just made it feel dark. Look at that. What do you reckon? You gotta <laughs> be kidding me. It's the right side of a hat eagle. I can see it, yeah, I can see it. Any hat you find on the market's got one of these. These are worth about $40 uh, complete. So, I mean, but that's where it would go. Guess what? Me that. I've oh, got the other half of the geez. eagle. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm just hoping that you can see the swastika, because then it will really bring it home to you, because it's looking a bit corroded at the minute. Yeah, it is there. You can just about see it. Don't drop it. Right. This is another wing. Amazing. It looks to me like a, a very clean break. So I think this was taken off a hat and snapped and thrown on the floor in disgust that they were having to capitulate. At this point in time, most Germans really did want to distance themselves away from the true Nazis uh, because they realized that vengeance was coming really from the rest of the world. So taking off any emblem that bore a swastika was their prime aim, just get rid of everything. But this is, uh, this is going for the Museum. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Congratulations. I bet you're well at this. Yeah. <laughs> so the team have found helmets and a haunting broken cap bag. Tell you what. Clear signs they found the surrendered German line snaking through the undergrowth of the forest. Now the diggers need to follow it to find the bunker that had been opened and emptied. A good starting point for the hunt for the buried bunker. I really don't expect to find bunkers until we've at least crested the hill. Where do you reckon now, guys? Let's go straight on. OK. You know, I feel at home with a place like this. Oh, Whoa! Oh, look at that. That's a bunker. Oh, man, look at that. It's almost like how they left it. It's not changed at all. Nazi Eastern Front bunkers were used to house soldiers, protect weapons, and as tactical operation centers. Sunk in the earth, the best-built bunkers could withstand a blast from a 1,000-kilogram bomb. The Germans built over 350 different types of bunker throughout World War II, from two-meter-square living quarters to vast underground complexes up to seven kilometers long. Most bunkers, like this one, are empty shells, looted of their contents and not worth investigating. All right, guys, this is a bunker, but it's not ours. But this does give us a clue. It means there are going to be more bunkers nearby. You don't just put one bunker in the middle of nowhere. One bunker says more bunkers. If the reports are true, the lost bunker should be just meters away, somewhere beneath the ground. OK, the bunker's back there, and there's a trench line going this way. Yeah, yeah, it's a trench line. Oh, look. You've got trench line, stops. And it starts right over here again. Trench line. No trench yeah. here. No trench here at all. You know what that means. Yeah. Bunker. Bunker. We dig here. Let's get the digger. Put the gear down. There's a trench line behind me that just stops, look. And it starts again right over there. I've been digging trenches for more than 20 years, and I know that when two trench lines meet and there's a gap in the middle, it usually means there's a structure underneath. <laughs> Do you know, this is, this is the proper Latvian way to get to a dig site. So it was time to call in the excavator and local World War II expert, Victor's Ducks, who'd alerted the team to the story. How you doing, Victor's? Hello. Our digger. <laughs> Bring it in. OK, wait there, wait there one second, wait. OK, Victor, so here's our plan. We want to expose this area exactly mm -hmm. where we're standing and just see what we can find. It's a great little tool. I'm happy. I just let him do his thing. Yeah. I just let him do his thing. Yeah. Most modern armies, even back then, would build zigzag trenches. If you build zigzag trenches, it follows that you would have zigzag bunkers. They wouldn't be in one line unless it was like a supply depot or something. This isn't a supply depot. This is frontline stuff. So it's going to be one bunker there, one there, one over there, one over there, zigzagging along. So digging in a straight line might not hit it, which is why we've started out here. This is like a treasure cave. There's going to be stuff in there. Bottle collector, right? Yeah. In 
inside it could be machine guns, ordnance, there could even be living gear, it might be living quarters. Could be toothpaste tubes, jam jars, toothbrushes, combs. It's, I, I, I just want to get in. This is the wrong way to go. We've got to draw a big box here. And I just want to make sure he doesn't start going off that way. It's pointless. What I'm very conscious of is no. this guy does it virtually for a living. So I'm, I'm willing to go with him to begin with. He has fine points. We've got time. <laughs> Personally, I'm always really pleased with local help because they know where to dig. Craig, he likes to do things his own way. It was really frustrating watching them use the excavator the way they were using it. Steven and Adrian and Chris were thinking like metal detectorists. And as a tactician, I can tell you, the bunker should have been there. There should have been a bunker where we were standing. And digging two trenches, it might have missed the bunker entirely. Uh, wait, 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 stop. You speak English, right? Okay, this is what we want to do. We think the bunker is between the two lines. And we've got to remove a lot of soil. I don't care where you start, but be, remind be mindful. I want a whole big box here, okay? Craig, you we do this trench, like Victor yeah. says, and then we'll move on. Then we'll come up with another plan. Yeah. Victor's, I wasn't trying to tell you how to dig, but basically, tactically, carry I feel the bunker is here. Keep I going. just wanted that You're guy to know what we were doing. It's That's always all. best to go with local knowledge. It saves you time, effort, and research. It's that guy is part of going. our team, and he had no clue what was going on, OK? Listen to that and answer me. He had no idea what we were doing. The so, idea that he had that we were doing was to dig a trench along this line. That's all he needs to know. He doesn't need to know what he's going to be doing in two hours' time, three hours' yes, time. Yes, he does. Because we'll tell him. No. Yes, he does. We're we going to disagree to about it, right. Craig. These two guys got different opinions. One is a military, one is a digger. There's a friction between them because their opinions are different. One's want to remove the whole forest, and the other one thinks, actually, that's too long. It's going to take way too much time. We need to be a lot more precise. You could spend all day just scraping the topsoil off and not see a thing. You've got to get down in depth. All, all we've got to find is that little chunk, uh, and we, we sort it. All I wanted to do is just get that digger in and keep the earth moving. But after two long hours, the only thing Stephen and Craig can agree on is that there is no bunker to be seen. If there's a bunker here, that trench would have hit it. And if it's slightly off centre, that one would have hit it. So you've got to imagine this landscape 70 years ago. It's no good imagining it now. I'm, so. a, I'm a historian. I'm trained to think about the past. Cool. Thank you. So reassessing the trench line, the guys turn back to the open bunker they came across earlier. I'd never seen one in all my years of digging, but I've been told that the Germans sometimes built their bunkers in pairs. And I was thinking that that's what we could have here. Look, that's what I want to That's do. really this loose. This is a roof. Just don't, don't damage that bit of wood. Just see if it follows if it's a roof. Hey, look, it's another, uh, it's another log another right there. Beam. We've not got a double bunker. We've not got a bunker going that way as well. Why would we? there be a log? It's the, like yeah. that one. It's the entrance. So that was just So you've the got tunnel. a trench going between two bunkers. Look. Maybe? Definitely maybe. When we found this structure, I, the excitement started to build. I got the butterflies, I got the shaking hands. I was thinking that this could be the bunker we'd been looking for all day. But before they dig, Craig gives the spot a tactical assessment. Let's take a look. OK, behind me, we've got the bunker we knew was there. And we assumed this was just an exit. But what we might have, in fact, is this being a door to a trench going this way and another bunker going out in the front here. That's open. That's an open space. Tell you what, what? There's more logs. Right, OK. Right, back out then. Let's get that cleared off. We've turned this into a moonscape when the other bunker <laughs> is right here. You know what's even better? Someone actually spent ages digging this but didn't follow it up. They just assumed it was one bunker and left it at that. This is absolutely exciting because this is the best thing we found all day. It's the most promising lead, and so uh, I now think we actually might find something. The team are on the hunt for an unopened German bunker. You've got another log here and a support coming up here and another support coming up here. Yes! But it doesn't appear to be another one because all of a sudden we've gone back to this tough clay again. So this isn't really what we've been looking for. I'm normally the last person to give up on a dig, but all I've seen beyond these logs was just hard, cold soil. 
There's no bunker in that field. The whole day has been a complete waste. And I've got no idea where we're gonna look next. It was frustrating because I knew tactically there should be a bunker there and we might have missed it. Dug for hours, didn't find anything, burning daylight, just disappointing.